Hi, and welcome back to the Stanley Parable. And as always, it's been a bit of an epic trying to get this up and going. It, it runs up fine. I just end up, because I want to record it as well, I end up fighting Steam or something in Steam or OBS. I'm not quite sure what it is because I always seem to end up with the desktop view floating in front of the actual game window or something. And I can't make the desktop view go away and it gets really confusing. But anyway, I seem to have got it going. So, how's it going to troll me this time? What time is it? I mean, do we really know? I'm pressing all the keys. Oh, right. When I press A, I'm supposed to press trigger. Oh, does anyone really truly know? That's literally what I just said. Of course they don't. Nobody knows anything. You and I don't even know each other. We're like strangers. Sure, I've adjusted all of the game settings to your exact specifications. But who hasn't? Ooh. It's just what I do, like a day job. And now, the job is over. There's no more information for me to gather. I've collected all the data on you that I can. And I still don't really know you. And you don't know me. And neither of us know what time it is. I guess some settings are just unsettable. But if I'm being really honest, the clock doesn't do anything in the game anyway. You won't have me here when the game starts next time, but that's okay. I don't believe you. Video games are meant to be played alone. You like being alone, don't you? That's maybe the only information I've really learned about you. Well, it's time to leave, for me to leave. There is still one more setting that we need to adjust, but it may take a little time before I'm ready for that. It's not really my job description, but that's okay. Perhaps you'll see me again, if you can find me. Talk soon. I see a loading bar. Yay, we're still in the Stanley Parable 2 as well. This loading screen's just epic. That's a hell of an experience in VR. It has to be said, that twisty corridor thing is really quite the experience in VR. Okay, ready? Begin game. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He said... Skip. <laughs> Right, so we still have the balloons, so that's a thing. I'm trying to move, I'm trying to move, there we go. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley to oh, please. Are you really just doing this for the achievement? Click a door five times, is that all that you think an achievement is worth? <laughs> no, 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 no. I can't just give these merits away for such little effort. A measly five clicks. Now suppose you were to click the door 20 times. I would say that's bucket. the kind of effort that warrants recognition. Stanley picked up the bucket. I feel so much better already. I can't put it down again. I can't put it down. I'm stuck with a bucket. Oh, now the bucket. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, because the bucket's on my hand because of the VR thing. It's kind of in front of that column, but behind it. That's weird. That's weird as. Why does that door? Oh no, that door sounds the same now. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Go on then. Should we have a do exactly as we're told session this time? Still no one was here. Stanley needed the bucket's warmth and comfort now more than ever. Perhaps his boss's office was where he'd find answers. Okay, let's take the bucket to the office. I'll find something in here one day. 
One day I'll go in there and there'll be something in there. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Okay. We're, we're doing a do exactly as we're told session. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication once of any again. human life. Once again. Crushed by the weight of this revelation, Stanley may have broken down into an emotional dumpster fire if not for the soothing presence of the bucket. Even now, in his darkest of hours, Whoa. did the bucket's warmth and guiding light pierce the dark clouds of confusion and chaos. It would be with him always. The bucket would. And he knew it. The two of them Keep were expecting to look down and see it not there point, anymore. Stanley was so absorbed in the tender spiritual connection he shared with the bucket that he didn't notice the keypad behind the boss's desk. Now I've seen it. Nor in his bliss of simply being near the bucket did he have any notion that the pin number for the keypad was 2845. 2845. But Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it that the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes, this is certainly the most logical explanation. It's the only explanation. Oh, I was trying to fall down there, but it won't let me. Oh, achievement! You found one of them. One of the miniature Stanley figurines. <laughs> Remember, no reward for collecting all of these. Only the intrinsic pleasure of a job well done. You can't buy that sort of happiness, Stanley. God knows I've tried. So, I implore you to Zero savor six. each and every moment you come across one of these beautiful figurines. Now, is this going to be quicker or slower? Last time it kept... Ah, yes, it was quicker. It was definitely quicker the last time. And it's still quicker. The elevator raced downward, plummeting towards an unknown fate. It would be all Stanley could do to keep himself together, or if not, not for the bucket. Soothing him, comforting him, reassuring that in this darkest moment of uncertainty, he would be all right. The bucket is here for you, Stanley. Everything will be fine. All oh, hail the bucket. Stanley and the bucket walk straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Okay, we're still going to stick with doing as we're told. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley and the Bucket both wondered to themselves. Television screens aren't coming on this time. Didn't they come on, or was it after I got over here? I can't remember. Uh. Employee observation protocol. If, despite adherence to protocol 2A and protocol 2B, an employee leaves the office during work hours, and a system loop has failed, you must terminate. Please note that employee 432 is a test case. While the need for protocol 2A may seem unlikely, procedure 2A to 2C need not apply. In the event of 232 attempting to leave the office, contact supervisor and then contact 432 prize pool. Am I for, I, I, do you know, do I have a number? I actually can't remember. Oh no, I have to turn them on like that, don't the I? The monitors jumped there to life, go. and Stanley nearly dropped the bucket in shock. Everyone in the office was being videotaped, monitored like guinea pigs. The bucket had never seen anything like this, and it very nearly burst into tears as Stanley cradled it gently, reassuring it that everything would be fine. It's okay. It's okay. Let's keep going.
Was the bucket under the mind control facility's influence as well? No. Had the bucket been told to do things it didn't wish to do? No. What kinds of things does a bucket want to do or not want to do in the first place? Probably wants to be a bowl of tunes. These questions raced furiously in Stanley's feeble mind. What are you calling feeble? No! He screamed into the bucket. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! He squeezed the bucket tighter, his one friend in the entire world. At this point, he could trust no one except for the bucket. I trust the bucket. The, the interesting thing is, is because I've never played the game originally. Here was the proof. I don't even the know if the bucket the was part of it. Controls labelled with emotions, happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he and the bucket would dismantle the controls for good. Two best friends, Stanley and the bucket, up against the world. Damn they right. high-fived in a really cool way. And the bucket made a sassy comment about taking down the system. I'm still amused by the fact that some of those buttons make the sound that I'm used to from VTOL VR. That first one. No, I can't do it now. There's a certain tone, it sounds exactly like the button at the start of VTOL VR. Mind controls idle, awaiting input. There's no way off here, is there? When at last they came to the source of the room's power, Stanley and the Bucket knew it was their obligation to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. Hmm. Off or on? Hang on. So is it all on? So if I press on... But at the last second, the bucket jumped in and pressed the button to turn on the controls. <laughs> Stanley gasped in horror. Had this been the bucket's plan all along? To take over the machine and claim the power for itself? How could the bucket have betrayed him like this? Stanley was prepared to throw the bucket away in disgust when suddenly an image appeared upon the enormous screen. Birds. Silly. Silly birds. The control buttons became active again. Hmm. Hmm. That one. That one. Stanley flipped through one video of silly birds after another, and then it dawned on him. This wasn't a mind control facility at all. It was a facility for monitoring and surveilling silly birds oh, goes back all and over the world. The mind controls were only a facade to disguise its true intentions. Had the bucket known this all along? Stanley marveled at the metal genius in his hands. The one who had pointed him towards We've this looped. incredible discovery. I was hoping it was some crowd. Stanley and the bucket never found freedom because they spent the rest of their lives here in this place living through live streams of the silliest birds imaginable. Of all the possible paths his life could have taken, this one was surely the best. And Stanley was happy. Yeah, I'm happy. That seems like a good outcome. Okay. I think I've lost the bucket and I can't see the bucket out there. I promised myself I was going to make this a short one. I don't want to keep doing runs and runs and runs and runs. So I'm actually going to make this a short session. That's today's run. Um, I haven't managed to do it every day. I did like Two sessions on the first day that I played it and then there was a weekend where I wasn't quite into it and then I did another session yesterday 
that ended up being an hour long epic where I intended just to do 20 minutes or something like that. I, I don't want to go tearing through this. Also, it's a little late in the afternoon and I promised myself I was just going to have a quick session before going and making some dinner. And that seemed like a really well-rounded um, little run through. I'm still none the wiser. I don't know if I'm supposed to be any wiser. I don't know if any of this is really supposed to make sense. I have some fairly firm opinions about what I'm seeing and what it's about and what the point is, I think, but they keep changing ever so slightly. I'm also heavily resisting the urge to start searching and reading up on the history of this game and um, any critiques and analysis that people have done. Um, it's a long time since I did it, but I did that with um, The Beginner's Guide after I played that. And yeah, there were some interesting takes on it. There were some takes on it that I didn't get, or rather I didn't agree with, I should say. Um, there were some takes on it where I feel people just completely miss the point. And I sense there's going to be an awful lot of that with this. At the same time, I'm seeing stuff in the... Overall, this feels like the content is a lot less contentious, or potentially contentious, than it was with the Beginner's Guide, for example, for many different reasons. This seems a lot more meta about games and why we play games and what goes into games and the relationship between um, you know, the game creator and, and the player and all this kind of stuff and everything. I feel like it's fair to assume that that's what this is exploring, that's what this is a statement about. The Beginner's Guide seemed a bit more out of that world, it seemed a different thing altogether, um, such that it could be more contentious. I, uh, I can see that there would be some interesting arguments about th what the point of this is, but it feels to me like it is very much about um, uh, exploring and talking about the act of playing games, the act of being a consumer of games, the act of being a creator of games. I may be way off base there, but that's very much where um, my head is with this at the moment. I can read a lot more into this and as I've been out walking and running and things like that I've it, it keeps playing through my mind it's um, some interesting ideas but I'm also open to the fact that it's just something that's one put together for the lols and that's it it's that straightforward I don't really care either way because it's messing with my head in the best possible way Anyway, from this quick and still quite charmed and quite perplexed dip into the Stanley Parable Deluxe Edition in VR. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.